and welcome back to Lanticourt Video. Um, yes, the two what ifs I still have on hold, I'm going to get to today, plus the who would win I didn't do yesterday, and today's who would win because it's the week of who would win. So I got five videos I got to pull out of my ass here, so <laughs> let's do this. Um, it shouldn't actually be that big of a problem, I got plenty of time. So, uh, first off, Landicore video. Obviously, as you can see from the image right here, we are talking about Kaguya from Naruto. This one comes from us from Richard Akala. Thank you for the suggestion. And you asked, which Lantern Corps do I think Kaguya can, uh, belongs into? So, as before, as I said in the last couple of videos, we are, I am trying something different. Instead of having all the Lantern Corps, uh, all the rings up on here, explaining why she doesn't belong to all of them in any great detail, I'm basically just going to go over the ones I think she do, could belong into, and then go with the single winner, I think, out of that selection. I'll briefly go over the ones she doesn't belong into. Like, for instance, she's not a Black Lantern. As far as I know, she's never died, uh, nor come back from dead, nor she embodied death. She's also not a White Lantern, because white is the color of life. It, it, you, you have to be alive, embrace life, things along those lines. Now, someone might say an immortal being would be very well, or at least a... <clears throat> Well, an immortal being would be perfect for that. And in some sense, you'd be right. Except for the fact that for everything I can find, she's not immortal. She's, like, probably extremely long-lived. Probably, probably like, a ageless immortality, where she doesn't age. She can go through the, the millennia easily. But she doesn't age. So, um... But she's not immortal, as far as we can tell. Now, she was never killed. Let's be clear about that. She was not killed. But she's not, uh, as far as I can tell, she's not immortal. Uh, but let, I mean, I could go over the other ones, but let's go over, like, the main ones. And, well, you can't see here, because I figured out a way to cut off the uh, uh, URL. Uh, I have four different ones to go over here. Now, I only think she really belongs in two Lantern Corps. Uh, uh, she has the best chance of two of the Corps. But there are two I want to go over, because I think they're honorable mentions with a possibility of them. The first is the Violet Lantern Corps. Now, I don't believe, per se, that love is her primary emotion that motivates her to do what she does. But it is clear, and we see this, she still care, loves her sons. Like, we see her when she grabs Naruto and Sasuke in their fight and sees the visions of her sons in her in their faces. Because they have the resurrections of them, obviously, the, the uh, reincarnations of them. She starts to cry because she's remembering the, her sons and the fact that she loves her sons. Now, that's all well and good, but is that the problem, reason I can't qualify her in love, even though it's clear she still has it in her heart, is the fact that it's clearly not the thing that drives her. She What drives her seems to be a greater sense of purpose. She believes herself a god. She needs to impose her will upon the world. And... If, if her motivation for doing what she's doing was love, and that she's doing this all out of love for her sons and, like, the, the man she loved and, you know, had, uh, their father, essentially, then maybe I could understand the love being the right option, but unfortunately, I can only use it as an honorable mention. Not to say she might not be able to... Not to say she couldn't qualify, but whether or not she... Whether or not she'd be able to actually qualify over the other ones, I don't think so. The other one I think is an honorable mention is Rage. And the reason I say Rage is an honorable mention is because it's clear. She's got anger in her. She's, she was locked away for God knows how many centuries. It's clear she's angry and pissed off. But the problem with that is, is her rage and anger the thing that was really motivating her? Now, I could definitely see an argument for that being the case. She was disgusted with humanity. She wanted to basically leave the world of its uh, of its issues of, uh, you know, the humans and things along those lines. Problem being is rage the thing, among the remaining two that I think she does qualify for, uh, that is her dominant emotion. Well, as I just kind of implied there, I don't think it is. But why isn't that? And I think it's because... It goes be her main drive. It does go beyond rage because she's angry of what happened, but it's not. It's more about again her sense of purpose more than anything else. About her, you know, imparting, imparting, not imparting, not imparting, but commanding her will over the world and therefore shaping it as something that is much grander her in, in her mind. Uh, away, not including all these filthy humans. Uh, which, by the way, I mean, we saw, like, the entire great ninja villain, like, the entire 
uh, the five great nations were entirely covered by the basically the ten tails tree. Um, but was the entire because that's not the entire world like in Naruto's universe. That is not the entire planet. It's not just one giant continent and then a, that co giant continent and then just one big ocean. There's more out there. We even saw that in one of the movies. There's clearly like they, they may exist in like a alternate version of our world, basically, because it's clear there's other continents, there's other people, there's other cultures. Um, so did the tree extend all the way across the world? Hmm, who knows? So, yeah, well, I think this is definitely a more likely candidate, and I can actually see a solid argument for this being her primary. I still don't think it is her primary. The two I think are her primary, A, this is an obvious one, because anyone with a high amount of willpower could probably qualify for this core, corp. Um, and that's because the main requirement is A, two main requirements is A, strong willpower, but B, you need to overcome great fear. And it's clear she, pr frankly, never really had fear to begin with, which is another way you can qualify for it as well. It's kind of a subset of overcoming great fear. It's just not really fearing anything. Although that's not entirely true. She clearly does have some fear about losing her power, uh, losing in general, being sealed away again. So there are some levels of fear she has, but it's something she can overcome, hence the Green Lantern. And to be able to completely mold the world to your image and, you know, manipulate to your will, you need to have a high degree of willpower. So with Green Lantern, of course, sounds like a pretty solid core for her, honestly. But... And I think most people probably could have seen this coming. I think the likely candidate for her is the Yellow Lantern Corps of Fear. I think, because when she, just the legend of her scared people. Even her sons, as powerful as they were, were scared of her. When she showed up, she was scared. Like, she, again, she was doing God level, God tier stuff that they had not, they, she was doing stuff that would, you know, stuff that would uh, turn them white. It was just, <laughs> just because, you know, I don't want to swear too much. Uh, she is, she is, she's doing shit that will turn them white, you know, um, so, uh, the fact of the matter is, it was them facing a god, and while Naruto and Sasuke certainly were brave enough, and if they were afraid, didn't show fear, it's clear that Kaguya commanded fear. She, just by doing a click of her fingers, commanded an entire people to be afraid of her, and she ruled through that method. Uh, and I think, frankly, when you are basically a god among mortals, it makes sense that fear, and you're not just a god among mortals like Superman is, even though Superman has qualified for fear in the past. Um, even though uh, it, when you're a god among mortals and you exploit that little fact, I think fear is the most likely candidate. But again, I think it does come down to either fear or will, but I think, again, I can actually see a solid argument for red. So honestly, coming to, uh, by the end of this video, or coming by the end of the getting to the end of this video, I will I will put a red as a third option. I think it's the weakest of the three options here, and then the honorable mention is still the Violet Lantern Corps. I do think red is the least likely, but again, I could see a solid argument for it. My uh, my honest uh, opinion, though, is it goes to the Yellow Lantern Corps. Now the question is though, kind of like an individuals like Dark Side and stuff like that. Would you frankly want a Lantern Corps ring of any kind? Probably. Uh, when you actually break it down, and most of the green, most of the Lantern Corps, no matter who they are, could probably beat Kaguya uh, when you really break it down. Because what can she do? What, what can Kaguya actually do when we break it down? Well, luckily, because I've got the wiki up for this, I can just immediately go to this, uh, go to her stats and you know all that. And give us one second here. Uh, things be slow. There we go. So, and I hate those little ads. There we go. So, I mean, in terms of she can absorb chakra, which wouldn't matter with a Green Lantern ring, unless in that universe they would be composed of chakra. Possible when you think about it. Uh, all killing ash bones when she fired those bones and disintegrated whatever she had, or at least any person she had. But would it pierce a Green Lantern construct or even that, you know, just the aura that surrounds them? Who knows? What the hell? Amenominica? What was this? Yeah, it replaces the world around her. Oh, it's that's that's the dimension hopping ability. Um, okay, well, that would be a little difficult, but the Green Lanterns can use their rings for things like time travel, teleportation, if they have to. So it's something that she, they can work around. A, a god vacuum attack, I believe that was when she fired those hands, right? That's exactly what it is. Lanterns could easily counter that. Counter, counter that. 
Um, I'm not, I'm actually not like a, I'm not like a Milwaukee or anything like not a Southwesterner. No, I'm a, I'm New Englander. So occasionally just, you'll just hear a weird accent come out of me. Uh, truth seeking balls, lanterns could probably counter that. Although those would be pretty powerful. The God tree nativity of world trees, hair binding technique. They can deal with that. Infinite Sukuyome, the rings protected from mind control, rabbit hair in the hair needle, sense of technique, summoning technique, temper. Yeah. Honestly, there's not much Kaguya would actually have that could, uh, take on a girl, any lantern court member really. They're, her best bet would be against a blue lantern, only because their abilities are weaker compared to the other lanterns in terms of like their base power. But once you get into powering up a blue an blue lantern, the blues and the greens are the strongest lanterns, but only when they're joined together. Otherwise, if you actually take them out of consideration, I'd actually argue that it's either the indigos or the orange lantern core that's the strongest on their own. And that's only because, and that's not including characters who have overcome them, like Atrocitus, who's a Red Lantern, the leader of the Red Lanterns. He's overcome uh, Larfleet, who's the only Orange Lantern before. He's beaten him. But in terms of like what the rings are actually capable of, legitimately, I would say that in terms of raw power, it's either the Reds or the Oranges. In terms of overall abilities, it's either the Indigos. Or, frankly, the blues. But, again, the blues are usually weaker base-wise in comparison because they need more hope to function or will to empower their hope. Because they're basically they're the only two lantern cores, blue and green, that are kind of entwined with each other. That actually benefit from each other more than any of the other rings. Because will and fear don't work together. Will... Fear and Rage, actually, I think, could probably work together. So that's an interesting combination. Anyway, I digress. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I still got two hood wins and two what-ifs. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.